Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to this session in the World Bank Parks Congress. Uh, I'm Luis Roma, your host. Uh, I'm the president of the National Recreation and Park Association here in Mexico. And uh, today we are going to uh, have an, uh, um, um, session with Araceli Rojas. I'm gonna present her and give you some uh, advice to, uh, to go ahead with our session. Araceli Rojas is an uh, archeologist and currently a postdoc researches at the Institute of Iberian and Ibero-American Studies and at Warsaw University in Poland. She has dedicated mainly to the study of Mexican pre-colonial manuscripts and the ongoing use of Mesoamerican calendars among indigenous people in Oaxaca, Mexico. She's partner also of the Dutch office, Bican Davila Urbanismo, where she collaborates in multidisciplinary projects aimed at rescuing running waters, running water, sorry. Her input is trained solutions which respect local knowledge and protect cultural heritage in the surroundings. Uh, Araceli, welcome and please everyone, uh, you are uh, able to uh, make some questions uh, through our application and at the end of the session, uh, Gavin White is going to help us to moderate the Q&A uh, part of this session. Uh, welcome Araceli and thank you for uh, participating in our event in the World Bank Parks and the stage is all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luis, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everybody. Hello, good evening, maybe in Europe or good afternoon in the Americas. So, as um, uh, I, I think I'll share my screen. That would be better. Yes, yes, you have. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Um, wait me a minute. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, okay. Go ahead. So, yeah, hello everybody. Um, so as Luis said, my name is Araceli Rojas and together with my partners, Nahuel Becandavila and Adrián Puentes, we would like to talk about our project in, uh, in Montalban in Oaxaca, Mexico. We have been working here for several years already. So we have gathered a lot of data, but also I think we have accomplished several good things. Um, but first of all, I will uh, give a, a little bit of a context. So this is Mexico, of course. Uh, we work in the south part of Mexico in the province of Oaxaca and its uh, uh, main city, its capital, Oaxaca City. And it happens that in the western side of, uh, of Oaxaca city, there is a three peak hill. Um, here a picture, you can see it better. So we have a valley. So most of the city lies on the bottom part of the, of the valley, but we have in, the, in this western side, three um, peaks of a hill that happens to be an archeological site. And that is Mont Delvan. Um, and in fact, it's a very important archeological site and all all of the hill we consider an archeological site. It is full of terraces and um, it's a beautiful view, by the way. It attracts a lot of tourism, by the way, because it's an UNESCO World Heritage Site, as well as Oaxaca City is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So the city attracts a lot of tourism. And for us, archeologists is actually Montalban, a very important site. And it is an obliged example when we studied urbanism in, in Mesoamerica or in the ancient Mexican past, because it was the first site or one of the first sites that gathered thousands of people in, in, a, in a place. This happens to be in, in, on a mountain or on a hill. And um, that is very interesting because uh, people live in, uh, in terraces, thousands of, of terraces around this, this uh, site. And as you can imagine, if it's an UNESCO World Heritage Site, well, it's full of discoveries. It has a long history of, of uh, archeological remains and, and treasures. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a, of a history of how Mont Delvan looks. This is 100 years ago. Uh, so you can see my cursor, right? Yeah? Yes, so, we can. Yes. 
So here is Oaxaca City, and this is the three peak hill that I um, uh, mentioned uh, uh, just recently. And here the river at Ojac. So yeah, maybe 50 years later, you can see more or less the situation. So here is the archeological site, the archeological park now opens for, for the public. And the water course of this main river at the bottom part of the valley, the river Atoyac. And you can see it's more or less a very, very oral, rural and agricultural environment still. But 50 years later, this is what we see. So the course of the river has already changed. And the, the, the city has now grown and has already spread into the archaeological site. So it's climbing and the urban sprawl is climbing up to the, to the mountain. And as you can imagine, not only threatening the archaeological remains, but actually threatening the natural environment, the forest. It's a highly deforested area right now. And that also um, has caused that, that has become a very eroded terrain. Uh, some other pictures, as you can see, the, the, the river, very wide, this is 50 years ago. At the back, you can see the archaeological site, so the mountains of, of Montalban. Uh, but right now, this is the situation. So we can no longer see the, the river. So if you see in, at the bottom part of this picture, you can see the, the trees. This is where still the, the water tries to run. But as you can see, more and more of the urban sprawl is climbing up to the to the mountain to the, to 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 the Montalban site. Here, I hope you can see the video. I hope the internet allows us to see. This is me in the bus going through the the river, so to say. So these are the trees that I was just mentioning. At the back, you can see Montalban pyramids. But I show you this so. For you to have an idea how this urban new city looks um, and it's also well quite remarkable because it is as i told you before not only threatening the archaeological remains but it is also that we see every time less of the green spaces and these are important facts for example in the city of oaxaca of 600,000 people there are more or less 70, 77,000 square kilometers of, uh, of uh, green areas. And if we add the other green areas of the metropolitan area, then we end up more or less with 1.5 um, square meters of public space or green areas per person per inhabitant of Oaxaca City. And that is very, very little. According to the World Health Organization, we should be aiming at uh, nine and 12 uh, square meters. So we are very far. So this is our challenges. So when we started this project, we wanted to, well, give uh, Oaxaca more of the green space but also considering the threatening of the archaeological remains, um, we wanted to have something that could tackle both things. And as well, uh, something that could allow water, and I will be mentioning a lot about the water because you will see later on that water became the focus of our project. Uh, in this whole on situation of an unplanned uh, urban new, uh, scenario uh, that as well has raised criminality because, as you can imagine, in this new uh, city, informal city, there are lack of services. So they don't, the people that are now living in Montalban doesn't have a drainage, doesn't have water services, doesn't have light. So at night, you can imagine this is a very dark area. And uh, well, you can imagine Mexico, I mean, crimes uh, happen all over. So um, our goals then were, uh, since we are facing this major archeological site, maybe if we look at the ancient water system and the water management, we could maybe have some inspiration of how these ancient inhabitants were dealing with water. 
and how they were living with that water, with that running water that from the top of the mountain is running down the, the hill. And uh, therefore, then maybe uh, combining this information with sustainable solutions, maybe combining it with Dutch technology or maybe other technology, modern technology, to design public spaces which can improve the natural environment, but also the urban dwelling of this uh, new city in Montalban, and as well protect the cultural heritage. So very ambitious goals that we had, and we started. So we uh, made a survey, an archaeological survey in the area, and that was uh, made by myself. So we wanted to look how this uh, ancient inhabitants of Montello were dealing with the pouring water. And we did find um, a lot of features. So step features inside the streams of Montalban, the walls, wells, also canals that were um, redirectioning the water into particular places. Um, and that was very, very interesting because we found out that uh, people had a lot of respect to, to that water. But also, uh, by doing that survey, we wanted to also trace how that water that was uh, uh, originating at the top of Montalban was running down into the new city. And I have this new other video, so you can imagine how the, the water is now, well, is traveling from the top of Montalban and is now encountering this type of situation, this type of city, new houses, but also new roads. This is the main road actually that takes you to the archeological park in, in, in Montalban. And um, so you can imagine, I mean, the water is trying to find its way down to the, to the valley and try to reach to, to Montalban, or the, to, to the river at Toyac. So we did find um, a natural spring actually. So there, is, there are moments where this water is in fact infiltrated into, into the hill, and later on it sprouts out in the shape of a real, real springs. And this water is, is, is fresh, is clear, but unfortunately it's being wasted because, well, it encounters this cement and these new streets, so, and, and very few people is taking advantage of, of, of clean water. Um, and we also found other cases where people, well, are, well, uh, throwing their garbage uh, into the streams or um, making their soapy water go into the, into the runoffs. And the water is, is having a very hard time to get through the new city, but also trying to reach to the river Atoyac. So that is a big problem. And also it, it's a big problem when you combine all this scenario with the rainy season. And when the rainy season comes, it pours down rain and makes everything more catastrophic. And the floods are also, well, not only a problem for, for the dwellers of Montalban, but also for the whole city. So there is a, a big problem. So this, is, this was our proposal. So first we thought of making a circular park around the polygon of protection. This is a federal polygon of protection of Montalban. Um, and to make some sort of a buffer area of a green ring that will enclose the, the archeological park and that will allow um, to have more green space, but as well impede the urban sprawl reaching to, to the top. But we were talking about, uh, well, with these measurements of uh, 25,000 square meters uh, with a ring area of one kilometer width. And that would be an uh, intervention of uh, 2,500 hectares. And that would be too much, though we envision this more or less like in this picture. So you can see also, we uh, thought of a big reservoir to allow water to be infiltrated into the, into the surface or underwater surface of, of, of Montalban. But this was too ambitious. And of course, it was not feasible mainly because when we look at the maps, there were very few places where we could really make a circular line all over the, the polygon. 
So uh, at that moment, then we uh, decided to focus on the southern hill of Montalban, where the archaeological park is, um, mainly because, well, in the, in the first place, it was very big project. And also because in this area is the most threatened um, for the archaeology, but also for the natural environment. And then we um, made this SWOT analysis to measure strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. I mean, to really look at the places where we could place green areas, also in combination with water, with flowing water, and um, also trying to, to measure the, the type of uh, urban density, the land use, the type of elevation, elevation, the features of roads or streets, if they were close to the archaeological remains, if they had archaeological remains or not. So, I mean, that we then developed a very wide network of, of data and it was, well, at that moment, really uh, easier to decide where we could place uh, parks or green areas at least. Um, in the end, also, we decided to focus on the most threatened part of, of this uh, small, smaller ring, and that was at the eastern part of, of the archaeological park, so next to the river Atoyac, so this area here. Uh, and then we came up with this acupuncture pers perspective. So we call this small propos proposals of urban and a natural transformation and it is like acupuncture because we perceive this area as a disease body so the surface the landscape is a disease body and when if anybody has to go to acupuncture you would know that uh, if uh, there is a needle there in a, a strategic point it will inject energy good energy to the whole body and this is why we ambition these uh, small parks that can be um, a solution for, for this very uh, damaged scenario that we have. So these are the number of uh, conditions that we would like these parks to have. So green space, of course, we need uh, more trees in order to fight the erosion, but also the trees will allow the water to get into the surface and re-nourish the underneath waters in Montalban and on, on also on the valley because there is a big aquifer uh, underneath the, the valley. Uh, we need then to enhance the infiltration of water, stop the water, so impede the erosion, and also maybe combine with these uh, archeological features that we found to, to revitalize them. Also to connect with the uh, streets or with other features on the landscape, either a city or archaeology or natural spaces. And also we want uh, uh, the participation of citizens and of course create awareness of all the problems here uh, around. So uh, we also made this profile and decided, well, where would be the, the best area to place these parks? And this is in the mid part of the slope of Montalban because this is where the area, well, this is the area where water needs to be stopped and needs to be infiltrated in order also maybe later on as it, uh, as it pours down the hill, the water would be able to be drained out happily, hopefully, to the Afterjack River. Okay, so these are the acupunctures. In the picture you see seven, but we have come up with uh, eight acupunctures or these uh, small parks. Um, and we have taken care of the hydric recovery. So what I mentioned before, this uh, technology of making the water to be stopped, infiltrated and be drained out eventually in the river at Tujac. Also, we are considering uh, the introduction or reintroduction of endemic species. I mean, these trees that will allow the water to be infiltrated or that maybe uh, they are simply, well, friendlier with the, with the environment new urban equipment, so we need lights, I mean, to also enhance this community life and to uh, dignify the, the, the landscape that we see right now in this informal city. 
and also enhance these uh, community places. So these are some uh, pictures of what we see right now. So this is one of our acupunctures. I don't have time to show you the whole um, eight acupunctures, but we have a, a, just a couple of examples. And um, this is our proposal. So we need uh, in this area, for example, to, to stop the water for, from sweeping down the, the soil. Uh, by also reconstructing again the, the terraces, but also allowing the water to just run there. Um, oops. Yeah, oops, I am backwards. I don't know what happened. Yeah, okay. This is another one. This is at the side of this road, uh, main road to, to the archaeological park. And here we integrated one, some of the features that we found in the, in the archaeological record. So the step uh, wells that we found at the very upper part of Montalban and also the small canal, so allowing the water to, to go down. This is another example. This is lower on the elevation of Montalban. But the, for example, now with the COVID, I mean, I would say that uh, we need urgently everybody to go and uh, grow our own vegetables. So this is uh, also our proposal to, uh, well, start uh, people growing their, their gardens with orchards, but as well with these canals that allow the water to run. And um, this is another example. This is the, on the other side of the spring that I showed you before. Uh, so this is where the water is running down into the streets. Uh, and this is our proposal, well, with more green, of course, more, more of, of the plants there, but also recovering the terrace structure and also making a permeable uh, floor to allow this water to be infiltrated. And this other example is a very good one because uh, this is already a space that uh, the people have been appropriating in the, in the past and just currently because uh, annually they have a, a festivity there every 3rd of May. And so this is a very good uh, place to, to, to um, beautify in, in, with a park because people are already there. And as you can see in this picture, the soil is very, very eroded. So what we need is more green, more plants, this permeable floor, and just dignify the, the, the place. This is a other picture of the same place. This is called La Crucecita. Um, and again, as I said before, we need to just reconstruct the terrace in order to stop the, the sweeping of the, of the water, stop the erosion, also with permeable floors and well, with uh, nice urban equipment. And last, um, social participation, because we believe that none of these uh, proposals would ever work and not, not um, any other project would work without the participation of citizens. And we have made a lot of workshops and uh, conferences. We have talked to people in, in various levels from the state, um, authorities, municipal, and also at the local level, um, managers of heritage, NGOs, and most important, citizens. So we actually have knocked the doors of, of the dwellers of Montalban and actually asked them what are their needs uh, in order to make them part of the solution. So we have made these workshops in order to people be able to design and to be, as I mentioned, part of the solution. Okay, so um, lastly, just as a conclusion, I would like to mention that in the long term, we hope that uh, these uh, two heritages uh, at Montalban, but also in the Oaxaca city will maybe in the, in, in the future get connected. And most importantly, to dignify and to beautify this in between city that, uh, well, uh, has a lot of uh, lack of services, but also has a lot of trouble in regards to nature, but also in regards to the archaeology. So thank you very much.
for your attention. Thank you, Araceli. And uh, just to see if uh, some uh, one of our participants have a question with uh, Gavin through our uh, application. Uh, well, I, I have a, a lot of things on my mind with this project. It's, uh, I'm super, uh, you know, uh, excited to share this because I think for people from Latin America who are, who are in, the, in the session could be a, a great example that how can we recover an area uh, with this kind of, you know, mixed things, uh, an, an archaeology park and a water recollection and acupuncture in the urban point of view. And of course, for people from, from, uh, who are from uh, outside of Latin America area, also to see how colonial cities like Oaxaca has this kind of opportunity. So which is the main challenge to finally achieve this project and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, have it like an, a reality uh, or has it like an, a reality in, in the next uh, years in, in Oaxaca or in this specific project for you and your team? Well, the main challenge has been the lack of funding. We have been um, struggling to look for, yeah, financial opportunities because as I showed you before, we started with, with a very big proposal and that was not feasible to do, it was very expensive. And uh, yeah, then we shortened it to these small acupunctures and we think they are not very expensive. I mean, they are doable to do uh, to do them. Um, but anyhow, we well, there are many variables in between the lack of funding because uh, sometimes the state is interested in in doing this, but sometimes then the, it's not in accordance with the municipal level. And uh, we also have this situation in Mexico. You you should know it that the, the office services in Mexico change very quickly. And sometimes um, these acupunctures lie in the very local, and not even municipal level, but in a uh, agencia level. So sometimes they are not in accordance and they, they last very, very short, like one year. And so it's not maybe enough time to really materialize the project with just one year and sometimes they they are more interested in other in other projects to to keep on putting cement on the streets maybe and we maybe don't agree on that but well this is the reality and then we have to to respect that but uh, anyhow i mean that is why we we bet on the social participation. We bet on the participation on the citizens, on the neighbors, and um, well, maybe I show you very bad examples of how neighbors are dealing with the water. But there there were other very good examples that people that are, are very aware that they need to respect the water, and actually they clean the streams, they put uh, plants, and they they grow trees that they know that will um, clean the water. But well, mainly I would say that it has been funding and uh, the lack of continuation of the project. Yeah, that's, those are the, one of the main problems in, uh, in our cities in Latin America, just for, for the knowledge in, uh, for people that are seeing this session from other parts of the world, lack of uh, resources and obviously that the municipality authorities change very quickly and we don't have any, uh, you know, a process to keep uh, in, a, in the correct way. And uh, as soon as we go uh, with the uh, community and ask them what they want, the dangerous thing here is to, you know, uh, at the end of the day, don't accomplish their uh, demands and just, you know, uh, run a process that, uh, you just ask them and they were, never accomplish what uh, you ask them for. Anyway, uh, Gavin, do we have any question of our audiences? Uh, we do, and it's one about the community, so right on time. Uh, Mayu asks, what's your perception of the community regarding the project? What do they welcome and what do they fear? 
Well, they have been very welcoming of the project, in fact. I mean, we, as I said before, we have knocked literally the doors of the, of the neighbors because we were tracing these waters, I mean, in, in the city. And it was very interesting in some cases that the water even came underneath some houses, very strange architectures as well. But well, we knocked these doors and we talked to the people because at, at that moment when we said, well, we are, because of course people react very reluctant and very untrustful, no, like, who are you? And when we said, well, we want the water to run better and you, we want you to live better with that water. And that was a, like magic word, like said, oh yeah, that is what we want. No, when, when we started to explain the project, like we have these proposals to allow the water to run cleaner, so you don't have to worry about sanitation anymore. And even if you were able to recover that water that comes clean, that would be a benefit for you, no? It's somehow to harvest that water when the rainy season comes, that would be a benefit for you. So at that moment, I said, yes, 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 we want to collaborate. And that was very good. Um, but I, we, I want to be honest, I mean, we lack more of these uh, workshops of participation, no? Because still there is, there is uh, this lack of, of trust of, of this type of projects, no? And some people are very reliant also on what the authorities say to them. And if we are not in agreement with the authorities sometimes, and if the authorities say, well, yeah, we don't, we cannot support you. Well, we also lack the, that uh, kind of pat on the back and say, okay, go go ahead. No, but in general, they have been very, very receptive of, of, of our work. That's all I have in the chat online. Uh, at this point, I think if anybody does have a question, they could simply unmute themselves and ask it directly. Yeah, um, that could be a good, a good idea. Yeah, to have this uh, uh, informal chat here. I just want to point that uh, Gavin, uh, be, be, uh, Gavin is part of the team in, in Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy. And this idea of create these coalitions uh, with the citizens uh, and create a, an, a formal structure to manage the park could be a good answer for the parks and the cities in Latin America or in other countries that the government doesn't have uh, the enough resources on the enough interest to uh, you know attend these kind of uh, issues in in the community. So um, maybe getting to you can talk about a little bit about the, the example in in Peaceful Park Conservancy how uh, maybe this could also help to to Araceli and the project and the people who are listening in Latin America how important it is to. Uh, formalize the participation, the public participation through an, a conservancy or an, a social, uh, you know, organization in, in your city. Sure. Um, we, we, I have a lot of um, engagement in the city, both from, we're lucky in Pittsburgh to have a fairly strong foundation community, which supports our work, uh, but also from citizens. And, and that comes in a variety of ways through small donations or through uh, volunteer hours or simply through advocates uh, around the parks who, who really care about one particular space or another. Um, so we have things like friends of park groups. Uh, we have obviously our individual and, and corporate donors, but a whole wide variety of, of private society that comes together around these spaces, which are really important. And I would say the thing that really excited me about your presentation, Araceli, is we, we in Pittsburgh as well, uh, find that water is a really strong organizing principle, mm -hmm. both for the parks and their design, but for people as well, because that really impacts people in their day-to-day -day lives. So um, I think in Pittsburgh, we have the opposite problem. We have far too much water and are trying to figure out how to deal with it. But, but really, that's an important way to bring people who might not otherwise be interested in the topic to mm -hmm. the table. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, well, we are kind of... Um, somehow stopped in the in in our process and we have uh, been very successful i would say because just recently our project won a, a prize in in london in england 
uh, and that was very good but uh, yeah we we kind of are on an impasse at that at this moment and we would like just to yeah to have some uh, little budget to organize another workshop i mean to because these photos that i show you are just work on progress you know i mean we still lack to go back to the community and say do you like this i mean what do you see wrong or, or right on these uh, proposals and and maybe all together we can just fix them uh, well, on the, except on the case of the um, La Crucecita, this is very well communicated with the, with the authorities, with the citizens. They like that a lot. And together with them, we organize, uh, well, we, we made them part of the design. So they were very, very happy. And we were about to maybe do some uh, small work on the, on the project. But then the authorities changed, and so that we we weren't able to continue. Um, and yeah, one important thing is that we want people to make the project their own, so to make them appropriate of the project, so to make them be builders of, of these parks. So therefore, we hope that people will take care, uh, better care of that that landscape or that um, new park. I also would like to appoint that um, besides the importance of have these coalitions uh, between stakeholders in the community, I think there is important also to uh, get help from the national and the worldwide organization like the World Bank Parks. Uh, I think if I can uh, just uh, give up an advice to the, the whole people that are looking this session right now, is uh, to belong to an organization. It could be the local one in your country or on a worldwide like the World Bank Parks in order to get help. And not just the help when you, you know, get knowledge or uh, just uh, educate yourself in, in the practice of uh, public parks and public spaces, but also because when you go to an, a government uh, and you have an endorsement behind you and a support with a, a worldwide organization like World One Parks, you could explode uh, the things in a better way. I just wanna give you an example. Last year, Chapultepec Park, which is our main park in Mexico, won this uh, like recognition and certification uh, on behalf of the World One Parks. And, uh, and that was an, a great news in Mexico as an, an achievement of the uh, Chapultepec Park and a great recognition that an organization like World of Parks could uh, you know, give an, uh, this kind of uh, recognition to our park. And mm -hmm. uh, that's allowed the, the, the Mexican government, the Mexico City government to promote more this argument to uh, you know, impulse the industry of public parks and public spaces in, in, in Mexico City and to justify many other uh, investments in public parks. So, this also could be a, a good example. And we would like to open the microphone. Please feel in family. We are in a great family of parkers here. So uh, anyone who can uh, ask a question, Manuel uh, Vera, uh, if you, you could open your microphone and your camera so we can see you and you can uh, ask your question, uh, please go ahead and feel free. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Hi to everybody. Um, I have the pleasure to know Araceli for a while. And I want to say congratulations again. And I want to ask Araceli, because uh, we had a talk about this, but I didn't ask you. Um, have your project raised the interest of some NGO organizations that could collaborate with with the project i mean for example um we discussed that the participation of the people from the communities i consider it to be really really important that they embrace the project and they feel part of the of, of the project so mm -hmm. is there any chance possibility that some and no ngo organization could participate on making the workshops and increasing the the awareness of of developing this um, this mindset that the people 
um, have to take care of the place that they uh, obviously they they want to live there. That that that's the place that they uh, that they have for a living. So, uh, is there any chance that the other organizations can participate on the project and make alliances? Yes, thank you, Manuel. So, um, yes, in, in Oaxaca, actually, I would say there is a rich, uh, um, it's a rich land of NGOs. Uh, and uh, for, for example, and th there are several ones uh, related to water. So we have allied with also with them, be, not, not necessarily because of Montelvan, but they are concerned on other um, water issues in, in Oaxaca, but not only Oaxaca city, but Oaxaca as a state. And we have invited them and they know about the project. Um, also, for example, um, uh, we had contact with um, uh, Toledo, El Maestro Toledo, who was a very important uh, figure in Oaxaca, an intellectual, a painter, very famous uh, person in, in, in Oaxaca. So he knew about the project and also support us. And so we have built these alliances with NGOs and people that are also genuinely concerned with these issues around uh, Oaxaca, no? Because mainly we, well, as you know, we don't live precisely there. So the people that are really facing the problems day to day are the ones that will say, well, yeah, we want to, to live better, no? So, um, yeah, just to answer it shortly, yes, we have made an alliance with mo mostly with these uh, NGOs related to, to water. And uh, we are also trying to find other NGOs that work with soil with the, because we have found out that soil is very important now. Uh, we have focused on water, of course, but now we have uh, become more aware that the erosion of Montalban is so um, serious that actually if we don't take care of the soil, we won't be able to grow anything anymore in Montalban if we don't take care of the soil. So, so yes, yes. And also not only NGOs, but also this interdisciplinary network that lives in, in Oaxaca and, or, or works in Oaxaca. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, well, as I told you before, we are like kind of an impasse and we are trying to reconnect again with, uh, with uh, well, many people there. Thank you, Manuel, for your question. Is anyone else Thanks. who wants to share with us and with Araceli? Don't be shy. <laughs> Maybe in, in Merida, you have the same situations, more or less, like uh, that we are facing here in, in Oaxaca. So, Luis, you can maybe share with us and also maybe with me, um, what is the situation with, uh, with Merida or its surroundings? In regards also with the connection with heritage, you know, because Mexico, especially in this southern area of Mexico, is rich of archaeology and a rich of uh, heritage, but I don't know if there is uh, maybe similar proposals in, in, the, in the peninsula where you combine green, water, <laughs> soil, and heritage. <laughs> well, it's supposed to, uh, for me to coordinate the session, not to talk, but yeah, <laughs> I, definitely I will uh, write to uh, and, and the rest of the uh, people who is join us in the session. Uh, we have many uh, examples here in Mexico, not just for the uh, southeast part where I am living, but in many places we are facing this kind of, and I think it's the same case in Latin America, the lack of interest, the lack of resources. I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's the same pain for, for everyone here in Latin America. And one of the things that we are trying to uh, move forward with these issues is to um, try to educate the public officials uh, so they could understand more about the deep value that the public space offer in terms of economy, uh, you know, environmental issues, safety, because we have this huge problem here in Mexico regarding the violence and all these uh, things. Obviously the health, 
issues that we are suffering because not just the virus, but the uh, problems with uh, uh, you know uh, disease that are related to the uh, sedentarism in, in people, like the diabetes or or uh, heart problems or things like that, and many other uh, values that we are trying to you know point in the mind of the uh, politicians in order to create more ambiguous not just budgets but uh, public laws and uh, in, in terms of advocacy to change the environment here. I think, uh, I mean, the, the, the ecosystem in, in regarding the public space, I think is the same in, in the whole area. Uh, we have these tremendous needs of public space and we uh, have to figure it out. We need to be very creative in order to find the chances that uh, we couldn't find in the past in the last three decades, I think public space has been suffered a lot in our regions. And uh, but I, I I'm really happy to have this kind of you know opportunity to get together in this uh, worldwide event that the World Bank Parks is organizing and having you here and the rest of the people who join us for this session and share and and, and try to know each other and connect and. Uh, you know, try to learn from, from each other so we could uh, avoid problems in the future uh, regarding the, our, uh, you know, work in the public space, no matter which kind could be that, that kind of work. I don't know if you have any other uh, comments, Araceli, or uh, some other uh, attendees to this uh, session would like to um, say something or express anything. Maybe I, I just, uh, if nobody else wants to comment anything more. Uh, I also well wanted to point out that uh, in our case it has also been important the, the exchange with Dutch knowledge, you know, because of their uh, good knowledge of water, of their great culture with living with water. So we have taken advantage right now that we happen because of destiny to live here in the Netherlands and to be able to experience all this respect and all this culture of water just you open your door and there is a canal there so that has also um, opened our eyes in order to look as you said Luis to, to Latin America because we have had a very yeah, kind of not very respectful culture with, towards water uh, because of our maybe colonial past. I don't want to go into that topic, mm -hmm. but as an archaeologist, I, I have my great suspicions that we, we could trace <laughs> that problems to that era. Anyhow, like in Mexico City, for example, is a great example without further explanation what happened to the Lake of Texcoco. But uh, because of that, going back to my point, uh, we have also had support of the Dutch embassy in our case. We have looked, I mean, if, if somebody else is, is looking also for maybe uh, doors to be open for funding, we have uh, had uh, uh, opportunities with the Dutch embassy and also with Dutch offices that you can imagine with a big culture of water, there are a lot of hydrologists and all also NGOs related, going back to Manuel's question, NGOs that dedicate them, uh, themselves with the culture of water. And so they, we have invited them to Oaxaca and also to exchange that, that knowledge. And that has been very, very rich to, to experience as well. Great tips, great tips. Thank you very much. Well, uh, on behalf of the World Bank Parks, we want, uh, we want to thank you. We want to thank Araceli for your presentation, great presentation, uh, Gavin and uh, also Ben uh, for set everything up for this uh, meeting and for, uh, for you also to uh, for join us uh, today in the session. Uh, please continue to you know, be uh, uh, aware that the event is going on for the next uh, couple of days, the next week. Uh, so try to uh, be in, in as much of the session that you could be. And thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Gaby.
Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Lisa, and thank you, Gavin. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.